Welcome everybody, thank you very much for attending. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Andrew Wollstone from Causeway. And today, rather than talk about what we do or, or, or general industry and, uh, and advice like that, what I thought I'd do is, is take you through the experience from one of our customers' eyes, um, you can guess, um, Interserve, um, and, and explain the journey that they've been through and are still going on as these things uh, you know, can always improve from their experience of implementing a, a, a source to pay system. So we've been working with Interserve for about three years now, um, really very closely on a number of projects, and this is um, yeah, just, just a, a brief introduction to what they're doing. So for those of you who aren't that familiar with Interserve, you've probably passed their vans on the road, or you've probably seen their signs or, or boarding, but effectively they're, they're a, a, a company in the services sector, so they often provide a lot of the construction services, um, but also predominantly in the facilities management, the FM space. So really providing a wide range of services and procurement needs for themselves and across you know any of their sites that they happen to be um, you know managing probably so, you know some of your buildings some of your offices um, as well as of course their own and, and for any of their other customers as well so there's two very distinct parts of the businesses with with quite different needs um, you can see that the, the size and the scale of the organization 80,000 people across 40 countries it's a you know a, a significant business so really one of the I guess one of the, the challenging things is, is where were they? Um, you can see the, the starts and the scale of, of the sort of the number of suppliers that they've got on their, their systems and that they work with on a, on a daily basis. But the different aspects. So about three, four years ago, they were going through an ERP implementation or a re-implementation, an upgrade of their uh, Microsoft Dynamics suite. So during that process, it was identified that a lot of the information that they were trying to get, a lot of the transaction information, a lot of the invoices, um, that was missing, there was a, a problem in that area. Um, that scale of that problem wasn't quite understood, understood, but they could see from the frustrations of the people working there, from the frustrations of the suppliers trying to get paid, that there was a problem. So they set up a dedicated reconciliation team within their department, and then through that work, identified where the problems were. Um, a scary number, I don't know if this number reflects with anybody else, but they identified that about 18% of their invoices that they were receiving in those days in, in paper formats were actually missing through the wonderful services of, uh, of the Birmingham Postal Service and that weren't actually receiving at all. And when you've got that low confidence in terms of the information, they did have a scanning system in place with the OCR, so the auto recognition, but the problems were sort of a little bit more fundamental than that in terms of that, that process, in terms of that reconciliation. So there were teams of people dealing with the scanning and sorting of, of information, teams of people rekeying, teams of people dealing with the queries, teams of people dealing with the reconciliation, checking the various different systems. They do have different systems. They've got, um, for the FM business, they've got a, a Maximo, a facilities management system for, the, for their uh, rest of the business they've got, the, as I say, the dynamic CRP. So trying to reconcile the information coming in with these systems and as a growing organization, the only way to cope with that type of information in this manual world is to add more people and more people, clearly more cost to the, uh, to the problem. So there was definitely a, a recognized problem. S some of the other aspects about them is that there was feedback on the supplier information, but in a very informal, ad hoc way. And in some areas, they sort of dabbled with sort of the catalogue procurement, but, but really, again, very small pockets and very informal in that place. So they started to put in some technologies to deal with this information, but really struggling it in that way. So it was recognised that they needed to change, really, I guess, in, in three main areas. You know, the first part of it was staff efficiency, well, cost at the end of the day, but the efficiency or the waste of wanting to take staff from manual processes, so that's manually keying information in, dealing with queries, um, accrediting suppliers, reeking information from one system to another, um, or sending information out to suppliers, chasing suppliers to complete the profile forms to send them back again. There was a lot of manual information that was going on that was needed because the systems weren't in place to manage that. A lot of frustration being seen um, because of the constant battle with the suppliers, querying the invoices, payment, etc. 
and a heavy reliance on an IT aspect to get the paper, to get the scanned information efficiently with constantly challenging different formats, different ways of doing that. They did have technology in place for that, and that was you know, working to a certain extent, but needed a lot of IT input. The risks and the compliance aspects were there as well. So the duplicate payment um, scenario that I can't get any figures from them, won't get any mission on, on the size or scale of, of that, that problem, but um, it was certainly something that, that needed to be addressed, um, wanting to meet the prompt payment code, needing to meet sustainability, um, the, the volume of 500,000 um, invoices a year um, was absolutely enormous and obviously growing, the wanting to store that information while they might not be generating that information, still from a sustainability point of view, dealing with the post, dealing with storing that information was absolutely a challenge for them. The strong controls and compliance was absolutely key, so we need to be able to demonstrate rigidity in that process right the way through, losing 18% at the front, not having assurance in the processing, rescanning the same information again and again, does not demonstrate confidence, does not demonstrate compliance. So when they were trying to do the forecasting and they're trying to accurately measure their own business, well, just the lack of confidence at the front end really gives no confidence and so no reliability in that information. So no ability to do um, a proactive work to affect the outcome of the, of the profitability of that company. So they had desires. They wanted the ability to you know, agree and then get the early payment discounts that they would work to identify and, and get the rebates, but clearly the robust systems needed to be in place that, to support that information. And the relationship and the ability to implement a supplier relationship management system really, or, or a, a process where rather than administration people, rather than um, just sort of filling in the paperwork, can actually start to work proactively with a supply chain, start to identify the better performing suppliers, start to reuse suppliers where they've been used before, that just wasn't available. So the number of companies that they were dealing with was growing and growing, and of course, adding to this problem. So I don't know how many of those um, challenges are, are recognized within you know, certain companies today, but I don't think that they're unique in any way on some of those challenges. Some of the scale might be alarming to uh, some organizations, but certainly the challenges they're getting, we could put up many different customers here and very much you know, themes across those. So I think in a fairly typical way, what did they do? So the first thing that you, you, they want to do is recognize what they need to change, recognize what they wanted to do, and they look at internal systems. Well, we've got internal people to develop. We've got software um, developers. We've got systems already that we talked about. They had a SharePoint system. They've got Maximo. They've got Dynamics, you know, lots of different applications. So are those um, fit for purpose? Yes, they were. But could they be extended and provide what they wanted to do in, in, in terms of their desires to, to reduce these problems? Didn't, didn't meet those needs. So they went out to the marketplace did a detailed evaluation, and not surprisingly, um, we were selected as a partner to work with them to implement and to become the backbone for their, their source-to-play platform. So really, what does that consist of? So at the front end of the process, um, we're providing for them an ability for their suppliers to register an interest to work for Interserve, something that they didn't have before. It would have been an email address, but no formal process, no way to manage that, that properly. So that's been included, as well as formal processes for internal staff to request new suppliers that will then now go to people within the business to validate, to vet that those companies should be added, and then check that they um, meet the minimum standards on health and safety, insurance, sustainability, environment, etc. And all of that is done through an online um, approach to get those suppliers to enter the information themselves, to upload the supporting documentation themselves, so that chasing for information or the duplication of information is eliminated through this online supply portal. So that then supports everybody within their business to be able to search the suppliers within the database itself. So they have a categorization and have always worked with a preferred supplier list of about 200 organizations that was traditionally or in an Excel format. So that um, preferred supplier list is now available through an online environment to allow people to search that information and then to make sure that that information is being kept up to date and accredited through. 
Supporting that are the transactional parts of it. So with, with 500,000 invoices coming in each year, um, it was identified that the top 100 suppliers actually represent about 70% of the volume. So never mind about the, the value of the invoices because from a, a processing point of view, that's, that's kind of irrelevant. But in terms of the volume of the invoices, it was decided to target the, the top 100 suppliers first of all. The top supplier was providing 50, or sending 50,000 invoices a year alone. So just by targeting one or two key suppliers can dramatically reduce the manual effort, the reeking of information, to take the information electronically. So they provide a number of different options to their suppliers to be able to send transaction information to send invoices in that then eliminates the time needed to sort the information, eliminates the time needed to um, scan, rekey, and deal with any queries. So all of those processes is what we're doing down the bottom, we're providing a number of different aspects to that. On one aspect, just taking the PDF and doing the extraction to allowing suppliers to log in free online to be able to key in the information for low volume but really where getting the benefit is, is for the high volume is to take direct feeds through an integrated approach, to take direct feed from the supplier's own finance system into the central hub, which is our um, causeway trading system, and then directly feed into the uh, in, into, uh, InterServe's uh, Dynamics platform. As part of that process, we provide, or they have built a number of business rules. So the validation of the information will automatically bounce back without anybody within InterServe having to check that there's a valid order number or valid information on the invoice because of the business rules that can be applied to that. There's a number of different options as well, sending information out or receiving information to connect it to other hubs or, or via email. And then one part that they're now looking to move towards to is through performance management. It's about taking the ability to take the feedback in a more controlled, consistent way and share that information or the feedback from any of the um, thousands of people out on site back into the system so when you're searching for suppliers, it's properly categorized and the feedback's in there. So that was part of the the systems and part of the processes that um, InterServe have implemented and are still going through in that implementation. I'll give you a little bit more details on how far they've got in a moment. So they have branded the system um, in different areas. So the, uh, the VAMS, the Vendor Accreditation and Management System, is now available to all of the InterServe staff through their intranet. And they have the ability to request new suppliers to check how far those suppliers have got through an onboarding process themselves without having to chase people internally, provide that as a self-service to their own staff, as well as providing self-service to suppliers as well to be able to come online, request, and then fill in the information online as well. And the preferred supplier list is accessed immediately through here. And then the searching is a key part of the system. So with a central database of all of the suppliers that's available to everybody at any time by going onto the int intranet system, um, traffic lighted, so we can see immediately with the green traffic light, those suppliers are still valid, still accredited, they're preferred or they're not preferred, but we don't have anybody that meets, that provides that particular service in that particular location, so we'd need to go to preferred supplier list, but at least they've already been accredited, they're already in the systems, let's reuse that information. So sharing that information was absolutely key to reduce the huge volume of suppliers that were coming on board day by day. And on the right-hand side, you can start to see some of the, the scoring that will be the next phase is, is to implement the feedback mechanism. So the ability to capture how those supplier did. So when you're seeing the suppliers that provide that particular um, type of work, it's in context with have they worked with us before, do we have their information, and how have they done. And then the ability to ha perhaps roll that out um, later on with 360 reviews if that's needed to actually get feedback for that next level of partnership. So that's some of the approaches that they've taken, that's some of the, the ways that people are using the system. Um, just to briefly introduce who, who we are, so as, as Causeway, we provide a platform for this to take place. Um, as a company, you can see we've been established for a number of years. Um, and at the moment, we have about 15,000 transactions or invoices going through, so not just invoices, but other documents as well, going through our platform a day, about 5.5 billion pounds of value going through the platform per month. So this is a very mature hub 
of transactional information with about 30,000 companies um, on the system already, and that number is increasing on a day-by-day -day basis. So part of this source-to-pay platform allows the transactional, but also the other parts of that, that process as well. Um, and we ourselves have been accredited to uh, the G Cloud, so from a public sector procurement perspective and a, from a security perspective and uh, interoperability, some of the standards and, uh, and, and forums and organizations that we work with. Okay, so in terms of that's the experience so far, the big pain in, in, in the missing information, lots of uh, missing invoices coming into the system, very manual efforts, um, and, uh, and, and those processes there. In terms of to date, so InterServe um, themselves have accredited or have at the moment about 6,500 companies on their database with a small proportion identified as the preferred suppliers pushed up the list for people to reuse again and again in the, and the standard when they implement, when they, they're searching for suppliers. The internal business processes have been embedded into the application itself. So requesting suppliers, vetting suppliers, sending the information throughout the business to procurement to category managers, to, to business unit heads, all of those processes are embedded within the application itself. So where is that supplier at? Where is their information? All of those chasing emails, all of that missing paper effectively disappears through the ability to check or reassign, have a look at that information, either from a, an administration or ideally, and more often, a self-service point of view. Just really supports that. And in terms of the, the corporate social responsibility, it's allowing smaller suppliers the ability to get on to the um, supplier list in a fairer way, but also meeting the sustainability goals in terms of the reduction of printing, postage, and storage of, it, of any of the hard copy paper. From a transactional point of view, um, at the moment it's about um, 5,000, sorry, actually that should be about 5,000 per month um, invoices are going through the platform at the moment and the number's growing with a value of the last 12 months of about 23 million pounds. It's not, so at the moment we're um, a reasonable volume and certainly proven it to about the top 70 suppliers rolling out, phasing beyond that as well even more. So there's significant benefits even just from the first 70 suppliers that we've um, pushed out so far. So they top targeted the top suppliers in terms of the volume and really they're the ones that are on the platform already. In terms of the benefits, um, so there's been a 12 day reduction in the cycle time of processing the invoices itself. So three days taken out from the, the sorting days taken out from the scanning process, days taken out from the dealing with the queries, days taken out from the duplication of information into different systems. So by bringing the systems together, by getting rid of the paper completely, for any of the, for those thousands of invoice going through on a, on a, on a monthly basis, the 12 day resuction time on each of those invoices, dramatic cost savings, but then also allows InterServe to then um, get to some of the other aspects such as the supply rebates to get the prompt payment code to, to meet those needs that are absolutely vital in terms of just tightening up the process itself. In terms of people savings, so one of the desires to start off with was to take people away from manual activity to um, value add activity and so far there's four or less people, two people in the, the data entry and the, the recon uh, two people on the data entry side and two people on the reconciliation side have been able to be redeployed to value added areas of the business because of just that reduction so far um, in the uh, you know the information they're dealing with on a daily basis and in terms of the amount of information flowing around the business in an electronic world without getting um, without having to store clearly there's costs and savings there from a, a risk business and a compliance perspective the duplicate payments, um, which wasn't going to get any values in terms of exactly um, the scale of that problem, but uh, it's clearly enough to sort of uh, make some eyes turn. So that quality of data has much has you know has been improved because there's no risk of miskeying or, or wrong keying information when information is received electronically. And in terms of the confidence of the information, 
from a forecasting perspective, from, a, uh, from an accounting perspective, from a compliance and an audit perspective, at, you know, dramatically increases because we know the information's coming in directly, no ability to lose it in the post, no ability to, to re-key the wrong information. So that gives the business unit, the business owners, much better ability to have a higher confidence, higher accuracy in forecasting, and to be able to um, achieve the rebates and the early payment discounts by reducing that cycle down by 12 days. So in terms of pushing for instead of, you know, what would you have done differently? It's the question we always ask at the end of every project, or at several times throughout the project anyway, is, and, and I think it's, it's definitely a recurring theme that we see, a lot of people go into these types of systems in a very timid way. Well, we don't want to be too hard and we'll only push the top few, we won't, you know, we won't be too bold, but certainly the feedback we get is be bolder, go for more suppliers, insist more, don't accept paper, don't accept excuses, and set a cut-off date, and after that date, which is a reasonable date, but after that date, don't accept any um, paper, don't accept the deviation, we just won't accept the invoices, you've got to come onto the platform, you've got to save the information. We certainly have other customers that have taken that approach and have had 95% adoption within uh, months rather than years because they then are taking that, that bolder move once the initial concept are, and are, are proven. The other lesson learned was to focus, uh, to in, um, broaden out the scope of the, the project itself. They wish they'd have gone to um, more of the organisation earlier on in the process and um, take other transactions sooner. So, for example, purchase orders are now starting to be, now being looked at to be sending out, but actually um, by sending out purchase orders through the system means the whole validation, means the whole process brings together. So that's happening, but again, from their point of view, lessons learned, be bold, go for that, push the project faster than um, originally expected. So what are they doing next? Um, well, as I just mentioned, they're sending all of the purchase orders through the system. Now, this is through a variety of means. For those um, suppliers that are connected directly to the hub, well, they will receive it into their finance system without any rekeying, without any manual effort. Um, for all of the other suppliers, they would receive the information through a managed email, and they will um, be able to then download the information. But at least from InterServe's point of view, there's a consistent way and a, a, a traceable way of sending all of the purchase orders that are then can then be used for the validation. Once we have the order information, in terms of the validation of invoices coming back into the system, we've got that lookup to be able to bounce back through the rules if invoices don't meet valid orders, then bounce back straight away to the supplier before it can be imported again. Okay. They'll also be using the system for intercompany, so we're not just talking about InterServe and its supply chain within InterServe itself. We're moving for tighter system integration, so where there are some other systems within the application, within the business, um, have automatic and, and address more and more of those applications, allow certain um, suppliers such as consultants to be able to um, enter the, the invoices themselves, to self-certify themselves, and bringing all of the accreditation and the transactional information into the single place to do rogue spend analytics. So when purchase orders are being raised or when invoices are being raised, the ability to analyze, well, actually, what volume of spend, what volume of invoices are not on the category suppliers and not on the key suppliers. So the ability to analyze that information to be able to target, well, let's make sure we do take advantage of all of the framework agreements. Let's make sure we do take advantage of all of the strategic suppliers that we've got in place. And then looking at um, implementing the, the catalogs I mentioned earlier on, that there were some in place, but then the next level is actually to take some sort of the, the purchase orders uh, or the, the requisitions through supply catalogs online rather than the ad hoc. Okay, so thank you very much for your time. Hopefully that was a little bit of interest, um, whether some of those um, experiences that, that one of our customers had um, so resonate within your own organisation, please obviously come over to the stand or look us up online, but we're obviously on the fifth floor at the stand. Please come over and have a, a chat with us and uh, let's see if we can understand um, how similar some of our other customers' experiences have been to yours. Thank you very much.